This all goes back to the basic teachings that the Sami, our white buffalo calf woman, brought to the Lakota people. As women were connected to the earth, to the tides, to, to the water, and to the moon. As women, you know, we want to feel safe, we want to feel protected, and we want to feel and acknowledge our, our spiritualness by praying. And so as spiritual beings on this human journey, prayer is a real great part of our lives. As Indian women, we have survived. As tribal nations, we have survived. We have survived because of our beliefs, teachings, and traditions. One of the strongest beliefs we have as Lakota people has been in the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman. In the old days, societies were real crucial to the makeup, the infrastructure of our, of our nations. There were societies for men, uh, women, and children. And these societies provided us with a way to be able to, to be a better person in our communities. The societies were, were created to help women and even men maintain a balance in their lives. So a white buffalo calf women's society was created by women and for women. And so the society that, that has been there at Rosebud for close to 28 years that has addressed the violence that women experience in our communities, whether it's physical violence or sexual violence, so is associated with keeping a woman, a, a Lakota woman, out of balance. And because we are women and we are responsible for the livelihood of our nations, our children are brought along, they're, they're swept along with us. And, and we, take, we, we take greatly to the challenge of being able to never forget our children in our work. And based on that, you know, we do practice, uh, I try to follow uh, the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman. And as the story goes, you know, they, they tell us that in this camp, the people were running out of food, and they decided that they would send two men out to hunt for food. And so these two young scouts went out hunting for food, and they, they went all over the canyons and the drawers and, and and they didn't find anything and they kept going and they came upon this high hill so they climbed this hill and when they got on top of this hill they were looking around and, they, and then they saw from the west uh, this cloud was coming and as the cloud got closer and closer to them in this cloud was a woman and as the cloud got closer one of the young men had unhealthy thoughts about her. And so she signed to the man the universal language and, and signed to the man and challenged him to come forward. This young scout, being foolish, you know, went towards her. And the elements all came together. You know, we talk about the Wakina, the thunder being, the Wayoni, the whirlwind, the wind. And they all came and they all protected this woman. And when it all quieted down, all that was left of this man was his bones. One of the first teachings that she brought to us as a people was that even in thought, women are to be respected. And so we teach this to our children. We teach it to our grandchildren. We teach these to our kids so that those generations to come will know what is expected of them. Those generations to come will also know how to treat each other as relatives. While we do the work, 
<clears throat> within our tribal nations. We also realize that the work needs to be done inter-tribally at the state and the national level. Back in August of 1979, NCDB Steering Committee was invited to Rosebud. Women carried backpacks, sleeping bags, and flew into Pier and then came on down to Rosewood where they camped. When the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence was first incorporated in April of 1978, there was pieces of legislation in Congress, both the House and the Senate. When those pieces of legislation were introduced, they, they lost by great majority. Uh, those same pieces of legislation were again reintroduced back in 1979 and almost every year. When those pieces of legislation did not get passed by Congress, the states themselves began to pass laws to protect women. The women in those particular states provided that leadership for their states to pass these laws to protect women. By 1990, every state in the Union had some sort of protection. And I remember going to, to the Hill going for some of the first meetings when the national pieces were first being talked about. And I went to make sure that Indian women were not forgotten, that there was language in those bills that protected the sovereignty of the nations as well as the sovereignty of women. So the women that were doing this work, the VAWA legislation, knew that there had to be special language in there for tribal nations because uh, tribal women were certainly involved on the national level. By doing VAWA these 10 years, we want it to become something that will always be there for women. And so as women doing this work, we can't just stop because VAWA has given us the money to do this work. We have to make those connections beyond those sheltered doors. And that's what it's all about, is that we do the work in the trenches, but we have to make those connections outside those sheltered doors to say, stop. You know, this is the way you can stop violence against women.